What is up guys, my name is Zua from uh, Jeva. Today I'm going to be showing you how to set up uh, JavaScript in an HTML document and also how to set up an HTML document. And then with those two we're going to make a really easy and simple to make calculator. That's not that featured but uh, it's going to be, it should be really easy even for beginners. So uh, I made this guide, I'll put this link in the description if you want to follow the guide. It goes really uh, in depth in showing how to make it. To start off we have to get a code editor. I'm gonna suggest adam.io um, just adam.io is the URL I'll put this link in the description You're just gonna want to download it once you open it um, this is what it opens up with you don't know what you're doing it's alright so um, you're gonna want to go to create a new document um, anywhere and we're gonna I'm just gonna call it uh, index index.html because it'll be the index so uh, yeah, well, if you open that up, we're just gonna get a blank page because we haven't done anything yet, which uh, you know that makes sense. So for us to actually edit this, you can either right-click, open with Adam, or you could uh, you should be able to just drag it in. Uh, yeah, you should just be able to add it in like that. And uh, yeah, let's let's get started. I'm gonna close out all these useless things and. Uh, yeah, so let's get started here. To set up the HTML skeleton, or what, what the HTML is like, it's gonna be based off, so we're gonna have to open up an HTML tag, and then close it. This is what basic HTML is. Um, everything inside of here is what's gonna be on the web page. So let's, let's make this, let's go more in depth with the skeleton and actually create the skeleton. We're gonna need a head tag where we put the title after. And then uh, the the slash uh, we put at the end of a tag, so that's that's that. And then also we're gonna open up a body tag, which is everything that you're gonna be able to see, and everything you want to put inside, uh, like content-wise, inside of a body tag. That's what you're gonna want to put in a web page. Now let's add a let's add a let's add a title to our uh, to our what's it called? This this this. Uh, well, let's add a title to this web page. So um, I'm gonna put title, and then end it, end the tag. So hopefully you can understand what we're really doing here. The title, I'll show you what it does. Um, title, we're just gonna call it calc or calculator. Actually, yeah, just call it. Calc. I don't. It doesn't really matter. I'm gonna open this up, and uh, you should be able to just open it up anywhere. Oh, oh yeah, there we go. Um, it's called calc. The tab title is called calc. So that's that. Let's add uh, let's let's add input groups, uh, little fields that you can write in or a user can write in. So to do that, we're gonna want to do that in the body tag because that's the most efficient way of writing it. So it's called input. We're gonna make two inputs actually. And I'll show you what that does. Um, go back to here. I'll, I'll just make this really easy for both of us here. Right click. There's there's two things you can write in here and. Uh, yeah, that's how we're gonna fetch the values of the calculator, the two two numbers. So I'm gonna give this. You're gonna need to give this an ID of num one because that's number one. An ID of and this is number two. Just, this is for later. I'm gonna show you. We're gonna set up the ID, uh, or we're gonna we're gonna fetch these values using the ID in JavaScript once we get down there. But we need to first get the structure ready in HTML, of course. And uh, let's 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 add some placeholders, and I'll show you what those do. Uh, placeholder, we're just gonna call this number one. I'm gonna copy that, and then call this number two. So as you can see, that's what the placeholder does. It's it's just you know tells you what to write, and then it disappears after you actually just start typing in it. Okay, so uh, once we did that, let's create. We're gonna have to create a form. Um, Let's open up a forum tag. I'll show you. I'll, I'll show you what that does. So inside of here, um, what's gonna be made? I sh yeah, it's just gonna space that out. Which that's not what it does. But inside a forum tag, you can make uh, like a select. I'll show you what a select is to um, select. We're gonna give the select of an ID of operations. And like I said, I'll show you what that's gonna look like. I'm gonna make the select end here. Oops, that is not what I meant to do. I don't even know what I just did. Alright, I'm just gonna rewrite that here. ID. We're gonna give the select tag an ID of operations, because inside of the select tag, we're gonna we're gonna make like plus, minus, all the operations. So, 
on operations. To make entries for a drop down, we're gonna do options. Where's because we're gonna make the option um, and then end the option. We're gonna do this four times because there's four math operations, and then inside of the option tag where you actually can write stuff, I'll show you. Uh, we can have AS, and those are all blank right now. So let's make this plus. I'm gonna make this minus. I'm gonna make this. Uh, I'm yeah. Multiply and then divide. So oops. So that's that's what that does. We can select those, but right now it doesn't really do anything because it's there's no way you can like. Uh, there's no way to calculate it, so let's make a calculate button, right? Uh, so let's, I'm gonna put that right under everything here. Slash button, open and close those tags. <coughs> right click. So right now it's just blank. Call it calculate and inside you'll see that it'll be like calculate let's make an output which I'll show you later with the with the tag or with an ID of output so ID is equal to output because when we fetch those values it's gonna make this paragraph tag and I'll show you what paragraph tags are there you can write inside of them uh, it's basically how you could just put content on the web page, like just a string. You could also do heading, which is just H, but we're just gonna stick to P. So um, yeah, let's keep that blank because we don't, we can't really see it if it's blank. And and the JavaScript will put uh, whatever whatever we select the numbers, the result into here. So we're gonna have to create a script tag now, which is basically okay. I didn't, it doesn't really matter if you have that type is equal to that. Uh, we can just do script. <coughs> I really hate this, but uh, yeah. So inside the script tag is just JavaScript. Um, everything is inside of this tag is equal to just JavaScript. So if we were to do like p and then just put HTML in here, it wouldn't do anything. It'll it'll you probably get some errors in the console if you open it up. Let's see here. Yeah, it'll be unexpected token because this is just JavaScript inside the script tag. So let's get rid of that. And um, also, let's go back up here and give the button an on click value. And I'll show you what that is later. Um, so, on click is basically when this button is clicked, it's going to execute something. So, we're going to make it execute a function that we're going to create inside the script inside the JavaScript. So let's make this function, actually let's go, let's go in here just so you can understand. Function, um, it's called calc, calculate, and it's gonna require no arguments. You're gonna wanna put like parentheses inside of, uh, or after the string, or not the string, but after what you write as a function, after you declared it, and then open, open, open curly brackets and close curly brackets. Uh, we don't need arguments, so just just put those there just like this that's how you make the calculate function and uh, on click let's make this oops, you, on click you're just gonna want to put copy that and put it in there I'm gonna put a semicolon there because it's JavaScript and th that's what that does so every time this button is clicked it's gonna it's going to execute this function so right now there's nothing in the function obviously it's gonna space this out more um, let's make uh, let's make this uh, Let's make this actually do stuff now. So let's start off the JavaScript. <coughs> so let's fetch. Let's make it fetch these values. So remember when we did ID is equal to num1? We're gonna fetch that. We're gonna. This is like an identifier. Just what ID means. So when this is when this button is clicked, it's gonna fetch this number, or the ID. It's gonna fetch this tag. What's inside of this tag? So to do that, we're gonna have to. Uh, let's create a variable. And this is how variables work in JavaScript. Variable, uh, we're gonna call the variable. What we're, so let's call the variable num1. So since we're in an HTML document, uh, we can use things like uh, the document class, which I'll show you how it works. So basically, you can just type in document. If you were to use this, like maybe in Node.js, you probably would get some errors because there's no document in. Uh, in an engine based uh, thing like that. So, since we're in HTML, we can use this. So, let's do document.get element element, sorry. 
document um, by ID. That's basically what it's doing. It's gonna get the element. So it's gonna get this value. Let's make it get the ID of num1. So in quotes, we're gonna call it num1. And then to actually get the value itself, we're going to um, we're going to do uh, dot value which is basically going to access whatever's inside of here, inside this input tag. So uh, that's that's num1. We could literally, uh, here I'm going to make this a little bigger for us to work in. We can copy this again. <coughs> Just to make code clean, you could put semicolons at the end. Sometimes it matters, sometimes it doesn't. It depends on your scenario. So let's call this, let's access the ID of num2. So right here, this, this right here, this, the second number gonna access that value and call this num2 it, so it, I'm sorry since these are two that are the same thing it, I'm telling you that it really doesn't matter what you call this variable just remember you're going to use this variable in the future so um, let's create an error handler so let's say like uh, if you have nothing put into each of these uh, you'll probably get you know an error so let's create an error handler which handles the errors if there are any. So let's make an error handler for when there are nothing when there's nothing inside of this uh, inside of these input groups. Um, so let's we're gonna use a conditional. So if and then in parentheses inside of this parentheses are the, is the condition. No matter if it's space or not. I'm just gonna do it just for just make it more concise. Uh, so we're gonna make it if. If there is no num1, if there's nothing inside of num1, this exclamation means nothing inside of num1, or these two pipes means or, by the way, and then I just want to let you know, uh, and means uh, two ands, two and symbols, but we're going to be using or just for just for that reason, uh, if there is no num2. So basically, this is saying if there's no num1 or there's no num2, then open curly brackets we're gonna make it execute a uh, let's make an alert so we're gonna return basically return um, it returns something and it stops executing any code that's further if this condition's true so that's what you're gonna want to use it for because we would we wouldn't want to make the error handler keep going if there's already an error we're just gonna make it return something so alert you can put the return after the alert it doesn't matter an alert is a document function or you know inside HTML or browsers I'll show you what it does let's say um, please pro provide <coughs> I'm sorry provide uh, numbers for each field uh, that probably makes no sense but I don't it doesn't matter re refresh it and uh, say calculate it's going to have a little uh, alert thing that says please provide numbers in this field yeah that's what well, that's what we're using the alert function for so now what we're gonna want to do is get this value so we've gotten the input values I'm gonna space this out just so you guys can actually breathe uh, we're gonna get this value so whatever's selected we're gonna get that value here let's make a new variable called var operation is equal to document dot get element by ID and then the ID that was up here for operation is uh, or for the select thing is operation we don't need IDs for these because these are part of the select tag so let's get uh, operation dot value so it's going to be getting the value of this so uh, then what we're going to want to do is um, let's see here we're gonna need to. Uh, let's, we're gonna have to create a switch case statement. Uh, <coughs> sorry. So to do that, what a switch case statement is is it executes everything that's inside of a condition. So switch operation. I'll show you. Uh, that is, probably doesn't make sense, but uh, it's. I'll show you. So any, it's gonna handle any condition that it's gonna be put into. You're gonna see how that looks like. So open curly brackets and then the condition operation. So that whatever whatever case it is. So if this is a minus, then it's gonna be. I'll just show you. Actually, I gotta write this first. So case plus uh, colon right. Yeah, colon and then break. 
semicolon. And then we could copy that. Four times because there's four math operations. We make this subtract, multiply, divide. So anything that's, if let's say the operation, so operation is the value of right here. So let's say this is, uh, or let's say this was add. Anything that the case is equal to add, uh, this code right here will be executed. So let's make this code execute something. <coughs> Excuse me. So let's make it execute. Um, so document document get because right now what we're doing is um, getting this output so we're gonna put the output and we're gonna make the output e like the inner HTML so whatever's inside of here equal to the numbers that we added up so let's do document get element ID output okay that was weird inner and then a dot inner HTML which I just showed you what that did um, it's gonna do what that did <coughs> and uh, we're gonna make that equal to um, I'm gonna put this in parentheses it doesn't matter right now since we're only doing two out or two numbers but it just makes the code more concise so num1 num1 plus num2 which is these two variable the value of these two it's gonna add those together and uh, just to make sure that these are numbers, we're gonna do parse int. So I'll show you what that does. Basically, it's just gonna take out any integer that's in the field and make this an integer. So instead of uh, putting in, it's right now it's just without this parsing, it just thinks that it's just a string. So if you add two strings, it's gonna say like, let's say this is two, one, three, one, two, three. Let's make this one plus one it'll probably output it out as uh, one one or eleven because it thinks those are strings but we got to make it think that it's uh numbers so let's do that we're just going to do parse int right here and uh, just like that parse int uh just like that we're going to copy this and then uh for each of the cases Make this one divide the numbers since it's this case is divide. Make this one multiply the numbers. Make this one subtract the numbers. And uh, yeah, let's let's see how that works out. I just realized I spelled uh, switch wrong this whole time. That's probably why it was broken. So let's let's just get that fixed. So now you could probably, if you did type it in wrong, uh, just fix it. I'm sorry. So I didn't refresh the page. There you go. Those two numbers add up. Um, 23 plus, yeah, that makes 5. Subtract, that's going to make 21. Multiply, that's going to be like 40. So yeah, there you go. That should divide it. And there you go. It does decimals too. So that's how you make the calculator. And uh, hopefully you guys understand how these variables work. And uh, yeah, if you want to subscribe. You know, if you want the guide, I'll put it in the link. I'll put all the links in the description. And that's how you make the calculator using making it from scratch. So, uh, thank you guys for watching. Subscribe. And, uh, goodbye.